Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club for people who hate reading. Instead of our theater pick, we're doing a holiday movie, and it's everybody's favorite movie, Krampus, made in 2015, along with Season 1, Episode 1 of Deutschland 83. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston. Um, it is... A, it, it is... Uh, was sad in heart that we have to tell you everybody's favorite princess died. Carrie Fisher died over the holiday weekend, along with her mother. Um, yeah. It's separate, yeah. not together. Yeah, not um, in the same room, I hope. Uh, it's if, our... if we're the ones breaking this news, though, you've been living under a rock. <laughs> yeah, <Seriously>. exactly. <laughs> um, basically, you know, we're, we're you know really sorry, especially you know if you're a fan of Star Wars like we all are, and yeah, yeah. Know, it sucks. It does. I mean, at least she got to become a Disney princess before she passed. This is true. Um, yeah, I have to well, with all I, the other ones. I was telling a friend about, about this. At least she got to kind of live and see how revered she she really was. Yeah. yeah. You know, and not just the character, her her herself, and 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 what she meant to her fans. Yeah. Uh, and and actually got to embrace that. You know, so it's, that that's really cool. Um, yeah, she did and then a lot Debbie more. Reynolds. I mean, what a legend. Yeah. As a movie buff, it's. A huge loss. Yeah. Um, just because of the fact they've been redoing Star Wars, and I'm I'm really sad about that. Uh, sorry, my iPad just took a dump on me. So the description for Krampus 2015 is, A boy who has a bad Christmas ends up accidentally summoning, summoning a festive demon to his family home. Yeah, very festive. I this is the first time I've actually liked the IMDb description. Yeah, I, I you know I didn't read this one before I watched the film, and I didn't read this one before the show, um, just because I don't. That's one of those like uh, back of the box uh, uh, descriptions that, that you read. You take it at home, and you're like, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go first. I give this a three and a half. Right. Um, this is like the Griswolds family the vacation gone to hell. Oh my God, why did um, I, why did I know somebody was going to compare it to National Lampoon? I mean, seriously, <laughs> come on. Um, honestly, Pick a different Christmas movie like my, Home Alone. My favorite thing about this movie is they let their bratty teenage girl walk to her boyfriend's house in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah, if, if that doesn't scream crappy parenting. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm thinking, you know, at least it's quiet now. You know, um, I, I well, thought it was... I think it's also one of those Midwest town kind of like, yeah, it snows, but we're used to this shit. Snow. You know, I think we got a, a, a California view of that. <laughs> this is true. I don't like the. <laughs> I don't like snow. It's cold. You know, I, I kind of think the blizzard stuff was a little bit weird the way that they pulled it off. But anyways, um, you know, I'm going four out of five on this one. Um, my co-host, no, I don't throw around. You know, words very willy nilly. You know, uh, an example: die Nazi scum, without really meaning it. Um, but oh, as far as I'm concerned, this Christmas movie is like epic. Great, We've got, we're going to be das booted. You know that, right? Yeah, that's right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like a good damn? There's people out there who don't like das boot. Let's let's get over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, Ryan, you're, you're up. Oh, you're, yeah, okay. it's your prelim rating. I I, I had I had not. I had a, oh my initial rating I'm sorry uh, uh, three three and a half, um, but I I um, obviously had watched this well after all of sort of like the interesting uh, marketing that was that was kind of behind this when it came oh, out really uh, so I sort of sort of forgotten about all of that but um, man interesting flick the the only reason <laughs> I'm kind of going three and a half instead of instead of higher getting up there with James is. Um, the the stakes for the movie were a little bit ambiguous. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of inferred sort of things, and I and I like my my death and destruction to be real good and spelled out. Because <laughs> um, so that way I know where everybody stands. I know yeah. if I can laugh at certain points, or <laughs> you know, those types of things. Like you know, when the when the girl gets taken. Wait, 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 wait! The, 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 time out. You you actually need to know like stuff happens in order to laugh. <laughs> that makes no, me and James seem no, a whole lot darker. Uh, I just like to know exactly what I'm laughing at. I can laugh when people die. I do it all the time. <laughs> the movie, specifically, for the record. No, um, no, that's a double but, entendre. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, right up until the last moment, 
moment of the movie, I was wondering actually taking place. You know, it was it was all real ambiguous and which is cool. I mean, it's 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 nice they didn't have to spell certain things out, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, at the end, I'm I'm having to call James. Like, so is this what we're feeling happened here? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll we'll get into that. They, they did they did leave it a little vague. I do I actually agree with Ryan. I think on some points they're a tad bit vague. Um, honestly, one of my favorite parts about this movie is this this demon or whatever it is managed to rip apart vehicle vehicles doesn't have a problem. They think, oh, I can shoot it when it flattens things. Well, yeah. Um, now, uh, I want to throw this one at John. Uh, you know, I said this last uh, couple weeks ago, like more like three weeks ago <clears throat> when I picked this movie. Um, if you weren't laughing in the first two minutes of this movie, you're watching the wrong one. Like, how much were you guys yeah. rolling and laughing during that whole scene where they open up for oh. Black Friday? Yeah, the opening scene was was it, it set the tone. <laughs> it you really know? did. And but it but it also changed the tone like three or four times throughout the movie. It kept kind of switching back and forth. You know, it didn't really have that that straightforward Gremlins feel where oh, yeah. where you kind of you knew the score and and you were laughing at the juxtaposition. But this was like. Evil, cute things. Cute things doing really funny, cute things, and then cute things doing evil, terrible things. <laughs> uh, you mean evil, terrible, uh, funny uh, things? <clears throat> well, I mean, like, yeah. And, but and, I didn't. I didn't know where they were trying. To... Are you Ryan? Are you there? Convey. Oh, okay. Um, I the the first thing when the, the like the first thing this happened. This is where I com why I compared it to the National Lampoons when all the family came. It's like. Home Alone meets uh, meets National Lampoons, and you have all these crappy family members come over, and yeah. and then you have the 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 German grandmother who who really there's nobody speaks any other language except her, and she's just kind of thrown in and her son. <laughs> I, I do like or her grandson and that, son. That's the, like the, if I remember at one point, her her son goes, "What did she just say to a kid?" Yeah, I thought it was hilarious it's when like she, she actually starts speaking English, and the <laughs> and the fat cranky aunt uh, just goes, I knew it. "English, I knew it." <laughs> um, oh, yeah. By the so, way, I really want one of those campus ornaments now. I, I th yeah, those are pretty cool. Um, I think, as far as I'm concerned, I was a am a big fan of Nightmare Before Christmas. And I don't know if John's seen it. Ryan? Yeah. What? Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah. Have I seen it? Is that what you just asked me? Yeah. It, it, at this point, you'd have to live under a rock not to see that Well, movie. some people haven't. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Uh, anyways, wow. but for me, yeah. this one, like with the Christmas presents, it reminds me of yeah. yes. when oh. he's passing about, there's things popping out and oh. chasing the kids. Yeah, I never, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I <clears throat> saw that portion of this film, I'm like, dude, this thing has just scored bonus points, like off the scale. Yeah, Mike. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the... was it, What Sorry. was really interesting is towards the end, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, you know, the one way they can redeem... So he, he goes down, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, they just went and did the classic, everything's going to be okay, the kid gets his wish, and the family puts back together, and let's enjoy a Merry <laughs> Christmas as it pans out into the snow and happy times. The snow globe. And I'm thinking, like, the only way this movie can can get uh, right before that scene, I'm thinking, dude, this guy, guy's, they got to cut to him when he's 30 years old, still hunting down Krampus, all grizzled and shit and half crazy because they killed his whole family. Jumanji. But uh, the very last scene when they kind of pulled out, and this this is what I kind of discussed with James was just like, and this is this is my theory. I didn't really look into this at all. They're just in purgatory, living this odd Christmas morning for the rest you know, of with with sort of the knowledge that this happened, but not really thinking that it was all true, kind of thing. But you know, pulled out in just this empty town. Like they're gonna just keep reliving Groundhog Day style the, See, the would, Christmas morning that I, the kid wanted. I kind of thought it was gonna be like Truman Show. Like they're gonna walk out the front door and a hundred feet later they run into the you know the glass there. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, could be happening. And to, to me, that's in that situation that definitely would be hell. Considering they don't really like any of the relatives there. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> See, I think I wanted, that's when the real horror movie starts, man. Is when the movie ended. I yeah. really wanted him to pick, you know, to like be holding them and be like shaking it or something, you know. <laughs> he probably 
probably does it every year at just Christmas at the real Christmas time. Jake shakes, shake, go, goes around and shakes them tap, all. Taps on the um, glass. So I'm going to get back to the ending before before we wrap this up. But before I, I think uh, the other part that really sold me on it were the gingerbread men. I mean, that <laughs> was just really awesome. I mean, and the whole chaos in the scene where, oh, I just had his name up, the David guy who was the uncle. <laughs> I don't remember his, yeah. yeah, I don't remember his actual name in Dude, the that, movie. That, Anyways, but um, <laughs> when he's sitting there and, and they got the nail guns and they start shooting him and they were kind of like acting like gremlins. <laughs> I I love I love yeah the, totally I love the noise and all the Howard. laughter as the gingerbread man are going down the chimney and that fat kid goes up there and takes a bite and it just freaks out on him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or there's, the one and, where they walk into the house and there's a gingerbread stuck to the fridge and he's like, some evil fuck did this. He takes it down and starts <laughs> eating it. And then the, the other part when you just saw like the foot coming out of that, oh, yeah. that, that thing's mouth. Um, you can tell the people who were in this movie had a hell of a lot of fun with oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this this movie must have been a blast to me. So I want to bring back to the ending that, that Ryan gave me a call um, the other day about. Um, now, for me, when I got to the ending and he wakes up and he, like, falls out of bed type thing, and I'm just like, no, don't end the movie like this. Don't. And he goes downstairs. Right. I'm like, no. And then he pulls out the Krampus ball, or the jingle ball that he has, the, the bell. I was like, dude, this movie this movie just, just made itself perfect. And then they pan out to the snow globe, and I'm like, dude, it's even better. I, I mean, yeah. th- th- that's the way that I like films to end, like Cabin in the Woods. And um, right. most of the, the Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, they always had a nasty plot twist at the end. No, the, yeah, the, only the thing, bus driving off into the desert. You know? yeah. the, the only thing I was curious about is because for his grandmother, she was free, but he's stuck in the ball. No, they were all there. No, no, but his grandmother was in there no, too. But originally, originally, like when she originally, when she was a little girl, obviously she made it out of there. Yeah, but he but was it. Was it because he can? Conf- he yeah, he confronted them or was fighting it that they ended up being free. I mean, being stuck in the ball. Uh, no, I think that's how the ending was actually going to go initially. Uh, the grandmother was didn't really escape. Krampus let her go. True. To. No, know that he is there, and to traumatize her the rest of her life. So right. it's, it's so, so. Why did that happen to the kid, though? Yeah. Oh, why did why did the ending go that way of the kid? Because he was fighting her. Yeah, yeah because why, he gave her. He stuck in the, in the snow globe with you with guys his are missing it. Hold on. Out there preaching the word of Krampus to all the other kids who are you know. Feeling hold on, sh- hold on. Shitty on. I'm gonna explain it to you. The See? grandma's wish was that everybody goes away. <clears throat> I'm waiting. The boy's wish. Was that Christmas would be what he always wanted it to be. So ah. Krampus gave him his wish where he had Christmas morning for an eternity happy and how it used to be. Oh, I, okay, I, you so know, the, it was I just like the wish that. that was different. Yes, the wish was different. Yeah. Okay. They seriously need to sell those Krampus balls, though. Oh, I know. I, I, I saw would... a couple that they were selling um, a while back, but it was like one of those uh, flash fire sale things, oh. you know. And I don't do that for like, that. That's, I mean, I've that's... done it before. I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, we do know. <laughs> well, man, I really love the look that the family kind of gave each other when, when they saw the, the, the Krampus ball. So, like, uh, uh, the, oh, that, shit. All that shit last night actually happened? Yeah, or, I, or not? Like you know, I do love that dad though, the uncle, oh. and and his his firearms and the the, the it's, kids. The, it's kids. heavy. Yeah, that's his wife. Yeah, you know. I yeah. It's like a Smith and Wesson five hundred. It looked like. Um, I thought so at first too, but I believe it's actually just a three fifty seven. That's like a, okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I still stick with my three point five. It's a fun movie. It's not. I would say it's definitely closer to Cabin in the Woods than a true horror, which is kind of what I like is the the Cabin in the Woods yeah. style. Um, honestly, it's I, I it's it's three point five, but everybody's got to watch it. Yeah, I um, mean this it, is this really is a great holiday movie. It's yeah. a little twisted, but hey, this as is far as a Christmas movie. film goes, I mean to me it's epic. Yeah, this because, is because I mean I you know there's Christmas <clears throat> horror movies out there that have been made. 
Uh, and Rare Arc Sports. Uh, yeah, I've never can. really liked this one as, mu as much as... I like this one more what? than the other one. So I, yeah, I yeah. watched I watched this with my wife, and I was saying I'm I'm totally gonna do this to our our kids, and she's like, you know, what do you mean? It's like, you know, if you're not nice, the crap is gonna, gonna get come. you. And she's like, you are not. It's like, damn it. Damn yes, it. I am. <laughs> it's like you know that naughty list. <laughs> there's a there's a catch. So James. You know, uh, I'm gonna stick with a four. I mean, I would love to go to up to a five, but um, it's not I, worth it. Honestly, I, I don't even think this movie is capable of getting a five. I actually think the highest rating it deserves is a four out of five. Yeah, I mean, I, I just really enjoy it. This would be one that I watch over and over again. <laughs> so, Ryan? And that's that's what I was going to say. I'm still kind of sticking with a three, three, three and a half also, because uh, it's ne definitely not without its flaws, uh, but still fun and still one that I'm probably going to be <laughs> checking out every other year. You know, oh, let me let me throw Krampus back on. That was a that was a pretty entertaining flick. I gotta yeah. say, even though this movie has their flaws, everything in this movie that I consider a flaw is very forgivable. I mean, some of the weird plot holes, the reason why they chose to make it kind of vague. Yeah. Um, there's nothing in this movie to me that is unforgivable, which for me is kind of rare because there's always something that pisses me off in a movie. Yeah, but a fun horror movie like this oh, does yeah. not come around every every year. And we're gonna and switch it's such a such an odd it's not a horror movie you know what i mean it was it was a really baseline kind of kind of horror movie you know it's a christmas horror movie is what it is well it's i think it's the same basic the same line as you've got cabin of the woods it has horror overtones to well, drive comedy but it actually it was it was a, a horror movie that actually had christmas spirit it, you know there's been christmas horror movies <laughs> basically a horror slasher flick that took place during christmas but this one actually kind of kept some spirit to it, oh, yeah. you know, and and also had the the twisted nature, you know, the the, the James that I was like. I, yeah. I I was hoping that during this this movie they play that's uh, you know the Santa Claus song, you know, he's checking his list, not or nice, and it's just like you guys are missing an obvious, you know, they probably couldn't get the rights to it, but. We're going to switch over. Come down my chimney tonight. I just don't think they would have, you know, gone on Front Street like that. <laughs> they should have. So we're going to switch the TV show portion. We did uh, Deutschland 83. Unfortunately, I didn't wasn't able to watch it because my life is a little bit busy at the moment. So James is, is probably the lone man on campus because, well, Ryan never does his homework. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. Snicker. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, it's an interesting concept. Now, what's it about? That's what I'm getting into. It's about the East and West Berlin being separated and living under the regime of the Russians. So is it supposed to be in 83? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it's crap. Is it? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's just crap. It's really slow story. Um it's basically like something about the Cold War, but way not as cool. Okay, because... That's about it. I mean, it's just really nothing that is stand out. It, it's kind of like spy stuff, so and so, it's just boring. See that? Because it looks really... Here, here's the thing about that. Sight unseen, um, out of all the things, all of the greatest spy stuff in, in, in history, the, the movies, was always in the Cold War. Oh, so yeah. they got a high bar. If you're going Cold War and spies anywhere in there, that's where all the James Bond shit was. Yeah. You know, so you, you better... He's probably making a really good point right now. Oop, yep, it was a good point. Ryan, are you there? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you cut out You cut out. Lot. Yeah, you, you might run No, I said you better come out of the gate swinging if you're going to be doing a Cold War spy story. Yeah, I exactly. actually really tried to watch this movie and it sounds uh, this TV, TV show, show, and it sucks because Krampus had a, it was a great pacing, great story, and you go from that to something that obviously had a high bar, and it it, it sucked. Um, I'm going to watch it, but apparently I'm probably not going to like it. <laughs> Which sucks. Um, next week we are uh, going to skip because somebody's going on vacation. Yeah. So the week after next um, is my pick. I am doing a uh, Mayaki, Maizaki, Mayaki classic, Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. Ah. Um, one of my very favorite Mayaki films. Um, and the TV show, I, I have to admit, I... Uh, do you have a TV show? Because I didn't do my homework on this one. 
Um, just give me a second. I'll pull up my list. Oh, okay. So we will be doing another Netflix original. This one is called White Rabbit Project, Ooh. season one, episode three. Sweet. So, ladies and gentlemen, I gave Krampus a 3.5 out of 5. James gave it a 4 to 5. Ryan gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Next week, or the week after next week, is Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. And as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>